Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by the channel. Now this next pattern I'm gonna be tying is another one from David Klausmeyer's favorite flies. This one is called the Opal Trude. Now it was created by Dennis Potter. Now Dennis Potter runs Riverhouse Fly Company up in Grand Rapids, Michigan on the Aussible. So I don't think this is a very old pattern. I mean, Dennis is a contemporary fly tire. You can buy his patterns from his shop right now. I'll put a link to it in the description. But he's got a whole series of these flies where he uses opal mirage tinsel for the bodies. And it's pretty unique and really cool. I mean, he's got a caddis, an X caddis, a stonefly, and a few spinners. This one I'm doing today, it's a true, I'd say it's pretty much a, a caddis pattern. And in full disclosure, I've never fished this fly. I'd never even tied it until a little while ago, but it's a really cool pattern. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. There's one in the vise, an opal trude. I'm tying this on a size 12. It's a standard length dry fly hook. And I'm using red thread. So I'm gonna put down a base of red 70 denier all the way to the start of the bend. Now I'm gonna tie in a rib. So either small or extra small, gold or copper colored. This isn't for anything but really holding this hackle in. We're gonna palmer a hackle all the way down to the back. So I'm gonna catch this in here and pull it a little bit shorter. And now I'm just gonna catch it in all the way along the side of the hook. Okay, leave that in the back. Now take your thread back, almost to the, the very back. And we'll catch in some Mirage Oval Tinsel. This is size medium. Pretty cool looking stuff, almost holographic. And I'm just gonna catch it in with a few wraps right here at the back. It's pretty thin stuff. Now I'm gonna angle it down so my first wrap won't have a little lump in it. See what I'm doing right there? Okay, now take your thread back up here to where we're going to end the body. Now just wrap this, touch and turns all the way up. Now catch it in with two wraps up front. And don't worry if you're a little lumpy, that one's smooth enough, but now we've got a lot going on over this, so it's not really going to, to show. And did I nick my thread right there? It looks like I did a little bit, so I'm gonna have to spend a few thread wraps just trying to get past that nick. And I did right there. So now what we wanna do, tie in the brown hackle that we're gonna palmer. So this is gonna be a little bit undersized. This, if you want to measure it, just hold it around there. And you want this to be about to the point, the hook point, so just gonna catch this in right here, leave it a little bit perpendicular. And if I have too much of a stem there, which I have a little bit of a stem, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim this off. Bury that butt. And I'm gonna need my hackle pliers for this. I don't have a whole lot of feather to work with, but just palmer it back. Fairly open, because you wanna see some of this Mirage tinsel underneath. So I'm going to open spiral wraps all the way back to where that wire is caught in. Okay, now when you've got it to the back, take your wire and we're gonna counter wrap this wire. I'm gonna do one full wrap at the back before I let go of this hackle. So there's a full wrap right there, and I, now I can let go of the hackle. I'm pretty well caught in, and I'm just going to zigzag this through and four or five good turns. And don't worry if you trap some of these. It's unavoidable that you'll trap a few, and we can try and brush them out, but not too big of a deal here. Okay, so when you got that up front, I need to back this thread off a couple turns and now catch this wire off with two or three tight turns right here. And let's go one more. And now I can pull tight on my thread and spin this wire off. 
And I'm gonna reach in here and pull out and snip this excess feather back here. So it's pretty sparsely palmered, but that's fine. We've got a big hackle we're gonna put up front. So the next piece is some EP fibers or synthetic parapost, um, just something that looks kind of like this. You can pull them tight, it looks like that. But this is one strand and this would probably not be enough of a wing. So what I will do, I'll just fold it over in two. So I've got that right there. I'm gonna just catch this in and you'll, you'll leave it longer than you want because we're, we're going to trim it here as one of the last steps. So let's hang our thread where we want to catch it in, kind of back here because we've got a hackle to put in in front of it. Now I'm just going to do a little pinch wrap right here. Let's see, two or three turns to lock this in. And that is longer than we need, but that's fine. So here, be careful with this. Try to cut this at an angle because otherwise you're gonna get a big step, which is gonna make it hard to put this hackle in. So I'm probably gonna end up with a step anyway, but let's just try to slowly ramp this down. And if you can make an, a nice, smooth, even ramp, this hackle will go on a lot easier. Okay. Not perfectly smooth, not at all when I look up there on the monitor, but I think it's gonna be smooth enough to put our hackle in. So, this one, same brown hackle we just used, um, but bigger size. This one, you know, is gonna be one and a half times the, the hook gap. So I think this is a, a decent piece right here. And I'm gonna catch this in all the way to the back with a little bit of this bare stem showing to get that first wrap down right there. And this one, I am gonna to have to snip off this excess as well. Got a little bit long of a butt end there. All right. Now I'm gonna leave my thread to where I wanna stop wrapping this hackle. And this is probably going to be about um, four or five wraps because it's a pretty, pretty thickly hackled fly. So I'm just trying to keep these one wrap right in front of the other so that these fibers will come out perpendicular to the hook. Okay, I wasn't counting. That might have been about six. So let's back this up a couple of turns and then catch off this feather right here. I'm gonna do two turns here. Now I have to make a decision. Do I wanna snip it before I try to clean up this head? Sometimes I do, and sometimes I just pull it back, and then I will snip it as one of the last steps. So in this case, I'm gonna just go ahead and pull everything back and then try to ramp this up, not too far back, just far back enough that I can get a whip finish on here. I've got one rogue fiber right there I can trim. Now I think I can get my whip finish in here without trapping too many extra fibers. That's the goal. Four turns is probably going to be fine because I am going to put a little bit of head cement on this thing. Okay, I think that's going to work right there. Put my scissors through. Now we've got this extra piece right here this excess, just get in here and snip this as close as you can without, you know, cutting any of those other fibers. So now we've got this wing. Um, what I'll do, just pull them together and then I'm pulling it a little bit tight. So I'm gonna cut a little bit longer than I think I need, which you want it ultimately to be about to the, the bend of the hook. So if I cut it right there and it spring sprung back a little bit, that's about the length I want. So that's it, the Opal Trude. Pretty easy pattern to tie. It takes a little while, but uh, no advanced concepts. So I appreciate you watching, folks. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.